Did you know that 93% of American drivers believe that their driving skills are above average? It only takes a rudimentary understanding of statistics to realize that this is mathematically impossible. Why are most drivers so overconfident? It's because of something known as overconfidence bias. In this video, we'll discuss overconfidence bias and look at strategies we can employ to minimize its impact upon our trading and investing. My name is AG Hunter and welcome back to my channel. My aim is to provide you with the tools you need to make better investing and trading decisions. If you like what you see, please remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have any feedback or suggestions on other topics you'd like to see covered, please leave them in the comments below. In its simplest terms, overconfidence bias is simply the belief that you are better at something than you really are. It's a bias that affects everybody. And by everybody, I mean everybody, including you. Closely related to overconfidence bias are other biases including self-attribution bias, where you find yourself more likely to take credit for your successes than feel responsible for your failures, and the Dunning-Kruger effect, which leads some people to hold strong opinions on subjects about which they may know very little. All of these biases can have significant impacts upon your performance as an investor. Amongst other things, they encourage you to take bigger risks than you should when placing investments, and also to trade more often than you need to. These bad habits have been shown to significantly decrease the profit you make from investing. In this video, we are going to explore these biases in order to understand how they affect both us and our trading performance. I will also discuss strategies that we can use to minimize the negative impact they have upon our investing returns, so make sure you stay all the way to the end. Overconfidence bias is perhaps the simplest of the cognitive biases to understand. It's also one of the biases that can have the biggest effect upon your trading performance. Overconfidence bias leads you to believe you are better at things than you really are. I've already mentioned the example that the vast majority of drivers believe they are above average in their driving skill, which is statistically impossible. Did you know that most people also believe that they are above average at sports, above average parents, and that they have an above average IQ? The list of examples is almost endless. Religious people report feeling that they are on average more likely to go to heaven than other people who share the same faith. Business leaders also report that they believe they are more ethical than their colleagues. Overconfidence bias affects every aspect of our life, and it affects all of us. This particular bias is more prevalent in men than women, meaning that men are more severely affected than women are. Women, however, are still affected by the same bias, just to a lesser extent. At face value, this might seem pretty harmless, but it can lead to some significant consequences. The study of overconfidence is a staple in many MBA programs, for example, as it has been shown to lead to fraudulent activity in corporate settings. Overconfidence in business executives can lead them to make unrealistic promises that they are subsequently unable to fulfill. When the reality hits and their business performance does not match expectations, many executives will report to fraudulent behavior such as overreporting of earnings in order to get themselves out of the trap that their overconfidence has placed them in. In an investment setting, overconfidence can have a number of deleterious impacts upon your trading performance. Most obviously, it leads investors to take outsized risks when making investments. If you are overconfident in your ability to pick winners in an investment market, then you are also more likely to invest more money than you can afford to lose should the trade move against you. A second impact that we see in investments is overtrading. It has been consistently shown across decades that small investors both trade far more frequently and much less profitably than institutional investors. Overtrading does a number of things that negatively impact your trading performance, including in increasing transaction costs when you constantly seek to move in and out of positions, and crystallizing tax liabilities when selling assets that have made a profit. In short, overconfidence is a sure way to get poor investment outcomes. Closely related to overconfidence are two other psychological concepts. The first is the Dunning-Kruger effect, and the second is what is known as self-attribution bias. The Dunning-Kruger effect is well known and has almost entered urban folklore as a way to make fun of people whose opinions we disagree with. In a nutshell, the Dunning-Kruger effect states that people who know little about a particular subject will quite often overestimate their own abilities in that particular subject area. A directly relevant example would be someone who has very little understanding of investing, believing that they are much better at predicting the direction of investment markets than other more qualified and experienced investment professionals. You only need to spend five minutes on Twitter to see this effect played out in real life. The Dunning-Kruger effect is not without its critics, but it does provide us a useful lens through which we can consider investor behavior. In one study conducted by psychologists, a group of students were given a test that measured their emotional intelligence. They were also asked beforehand to predict what score they believed they would get on that same test. The study showed that people who scored in the bottom 10% of results on average overestimated their ability by 65%. The people who scored in the top 10% of results, on the other hand, underestimated their ability by approximately 20%. To put this another way, people who are very skilled or knowledgeable in a particular subject Subject area often have a healthy level of skepticism about their own abilities. Some people attribute this to the fact that when you know a lot about a subject, you are also more likely to be aware of the limitations of your own knowledge. 
When you know very little about something, however, it's often very easy to overestimate your level of knowledge. This insight gives us a useful tool which we can use to mitigate the effects of these kinds of biases, which we will return to later in this video. Also closely related to overconfidence bias is a second bias known as self-attribution bias. People who suffer from self-attribution bias attribute success to their own level of skill, yet believe that failures are a result of factors beyond their control. I have seen this colloquially referred to as the drinking your own Kool-Aid bias. It's common to see this playing out in everyday life. People who have been successful in some capacity almost always attribute that success to their skill or to hard work. People who are unsuccessful, however, will quite often believe that their failure is a result of bad luck or because of some other factor beyond their control which worked against them. In an investment setting, this is the trader who believes that all of their successful trades were the result of a skillful understanding of investment markets while simultaneously believing that when trades are unsuccessful, it is because the markets have moved against them. When you think about this, it's quite easy to see why this can have a negative impact upon your investing. If you are never willing to analyze the reasons for your failed trades, you will never learn from your trading experience, and thus, you will never increase your level of skill. Having looked at these three concepts, hopefully you should now have an understanding of how they can negatively impact upon your performance as a trader or an investor. What can we do about it though? There are actually quite a few things which we can do to significantly minimize the impact that these biases have on our performance. Firstly, you have to acknowledge that these biases affect you. I can't emphasize enough that they affect everybody. One of the most challenging aspects of understanding these biases is acknowledging that they affect you too. To quote Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winning physicist and one of the most famous scientists of the 20th century, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Secondly, you need to have an understanding of when you're most likely to be affected by these kinds of biases. On the one hand, it's fair to say that you're affected by this all the time, but there are also specific points in time where the impact can be significantly greater. The most obvious is after a series of successful trades. If you've successfully chosen two or three investments that made profit, then after this run of successes, you are significantly more likely to be susceptible to being overconfident. Traders with a string of successes are far more likely to increase their investment size and to increase the frequency of their trading as their confidence builds based upon their success. So if you go through a period of success, it's healthy to pause and reflect before significantly increasing the level of risk that you are taking. Thirdly, you should have a healthy level of self-doubt. I've seen this described as gauging your level of self-denial. Continuing with our above example, if you have had a string of successful trades, but during that time the market has also risen, a smart investor will have a healthy level of skepticism about their performance. They will at least consider the possibility that their success was at least partially due to luck. There is a famous saying in investment markets that a rising tide lifts all boats, and this is very relevant to a discussion of biases of these kinds. Also, be honest with yourself in the way you respond to criticism. If someone were to make a criticism of your performance, how would you react? Would you ignore the criticism? Or would you consider its merits and see if there was some truth to what was being said? This flies in the face of the attitude of many passionate amateur investors. There is a famous quote, often misattributed to Gandhi, that goes something like this. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. This is a fantastic quote and sounds great in principle. But if holding this attitude leads you to ignore information that contradicts your opinions, then the only person you fool is yourself. If you do the work, then be confident in your opinions, but always maintain a healthy level of self-doubt. Finally, and most concretely, if you're serious about investing, then you need to have a well-defined trading plan. Ideally, it should be written down and you should review it regularly. You should have a good understanding of why you are investing, what your investment criteria are, and what triggers will lead you to make new investments. You should also have a trading diary where you write down each trade that you make, the reasons that you made it, and what your objectives for that trade were. Are you seeking a short-term profit from a price rise, or are you intending to hold the investment for the long term? What happens if the price of the investment falls? Do you sell, do you hold, or would you buy more? Not only does it make it easier for you to stick to your plan, but it also allows you to more critically assess your performance. If you've had a series of unsuccessful trades, keeping a record as to why you made each individual trade will allow you to do a post-mortem to see if there are any common themes that are leading you to lose money. You will never be successful in every trade, but by studying each unsuccessful trade, you will undoubtedly become a better investor over the long term. That concludes our discussion of overconfidence bias. Next week, we're going to view a different kind of cognitive bias known as anchoring. Anchoring, amongst other things, can cause us to fixate upon otherwise irrelevant information. The effect of this is that we are often subject to what is known as decision paralysis when trying to enter and exit trades. We'll discuss this in greater detail in our next video. So if you're still here, that means you've watched all the way to the end, which must mean that you like what you've seen. Please hit like and subscribe to show your appreciation. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions on this video, or would like to suggest topics for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.